wireless keyboard and uh, I left the batteries in there too long and one of them has given out evidently and locked this up so I uh, tried a number of different things to get that uh, to break loose right there obviously the first thing you start with a little screwdriver you know and you just crank on it hard and it doesn't come loose I'm not going to show you that again I took a penny you can see by the edges of the penny that have done some irreparable damage to it penny didn't work so I went to a bigger coin <laughs> and uh, that gave me a little more leverage and a heavy duty pair of pliers and uh, was able to crank on it and bend that so far out of shape I had to smack it back together with a hammer and you can let's see if I can get the light on this right it's a little shards uh, started to tear it up I was really not wanting to do that so I got the old hammer drill cranked on it with a bit that looked like this and that kind of hammered it here and there it was not going to break loose at that point I knew that it's pretty well bonded uh, inside so let me show you the approach I used to actually resolve getting the batteries out of there and putting some new ones in without having to buy another $100 keyboard. So first thing you do is you grip the middle of this cover right here and kind of pinch and pull it off. First time you pull it off might be a little more exciting than that. And then there is right here, if you can see it, a little teeny screw. So we're going to take that off. Okay, the magic of modern digital filming. I uh, secured a little piece of, uh, it's painter's tape is all it is. And if you don't have a little magnetizing bowl or whatever, if you're like me, these little screws have a tendency to disappear. If you drop it on the floor, you are toast. This is the key of being successful. This screw is very different looking and getting it replaced would be a nightmare. So having something to set it on so it stays fixed while you work on the rest of it, it's pretty important. On the other end of this, you have the on off button and you'll see it's just a hollow tube, which if you work with it just a little bit, uh, you can get it to, to come loose. The best thing to do is to use a little screwdriver like so. Give me just a second. And there we go. Get in here close where you can see it. You want to be able to lift this. And then I'm turn to get the light right where you can see this thing. You want to get that little blue spot out of there now it's turning on me a little bit you should take this off before you undo the screw once you get it to to slip out of there then just hold it back out of your way it just comes straight up and out so hold that out of your way and then pull on the canister and slide the tube looks like a big long inserted torpedo and you just pull it right out of there be careful with the electronics. Hold this ribbon back out of your way. First one will probably come down just fine. Second one ain't coming. So this is where you can get creative. And I have found that you can use soft things like your knee, which is what I just did. Um, to get it to come down and break loose. If it's all festered up in there, the goal is to, you know, get something on that and pull it loose. Okay. Now I had taken the other one out. It was all crusted in the back and corroded. Then, you, a lot of people, uh, you know, try WD-40. And you really don't have to take this off ever again if it's fused in there. And um, it's just not worth it to deal with it. 
What you can do though, if I can get a shot of that down inside the tube, is to clean that tube. You can do it with a gun kit. If you have a gun cleaning kit, that's perfect for just getting it down in there, twisting. Big long handled screwdriver, sliding down in there will work too if you put a little clot and cloth on it. Put a little WD-40 on it if you want. Uh, solvent of some kind. I didn't find any electronics down in here. They're all on board this, which is really uh, nice. So uh, uh, once you get that cleaned out a little bit, you're just trying to get the terminal down there to connect with the battery. It shows right here, if you can see it, that the battery is supposed to slide in place like that. So you pull this back out of your way again. Do this without the tube reinserted. Get your other one. Slide it in there. Battle's half whooped. Okay, so you're halfway there. You just take your tube again. Slide it back down inside the keyboard like so try to do this with one hand so you can see it make sure let's turn this around make sure you hold the ribbon out of the way do not lay it down flat like that pull it back out of your way and then slide it past it okay I'm gonna use my other hand here to give me a little bit of a boost and it's Oh, if you, let me get a close-up. See this little piece right here? That's the piece that's going to catch you. So you got to get that piece up and out of the way. Okay? Get it started, and then I'll bring it back and show you. So now that, that I've got it behind there, I can actually slide it right into place just like that. You want to line that screw back up right there with the hole. And push this in. So that you get a good tight seal on it, you'll fear it. One thing I did find is that it wasn't working real good uh, when I first put it in there. So I took my finger, held on to this other end back here, like so, and then pushed that battery back in there until you hear it lock into place. You heard that thump. That was the key to getting it to uh, function again. Okay, and then put the screw back in place. Okay, remember what I told you about that tape being your lifeline. Take that little screw and put it right back down in there. And you will lose that thing. Don't over tighten it when you're doing this. This snug is good. Okay, it's a keyboard. It's not a, an engine bolt on your truck. Alright, so I take this um, a uh, little screwdriver will get that ribbon back in there and you have to be a little careful with this ribbon It's not going to do this too many times. So you just got to be careful. You bend it at the right angle on this so you can see it Okay, you, you want to tuck that left corner in there first and Then just kind of snug it up with your finger and then you need to use something flat and put on the blue tape Part and just push it down on either side okay you'll feel it slide in place and it locks in place tight okay so it's like that put your cover back on it okay, I brought the keyboard in here next to the iMac and the power on wireless mouse is working You get nothing so what do you do okay so you cancel screen goes black all right so you'll get this uh, sign after you leave it sit here for a minute and uh, it says it's gonna pair okay so it happened pretty quickly and it says connected right here and pops back here and then you can start to type in uh, your password operable great and that's it save hundred dollars on the keyboard and last but not least if you uh, do it the way I showed you to begin with 
then you won't be marring the edges of that. But you can take a little file, file it down right there if you need to. Um, if you've already jacked with that a little bit. <clears throat> I did what I could to get that off. I'm sure you could. You could tear it up some more. and Some people actually cut it out. and uh, It's just not worth it. It's one screw. A little bit of plastic work. And uh, solid state stuff. Best of luck.